Hi everyone, this is Math for Uni. This is the work solution to question 3 from lecture 6. If you find this content helpful, then please consider liking and subscribing, as well as checking out our Udemy course, the link is in the description. The question says, prove that if xn converges as a sequence to x, and yn converges to y, then the product of xn and yn converges to x times y. So first, let's unpick what assumptions we can use, namely that xn converges to x and yn converges to y. If xn converges to x, then this tells us that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a number, we'll call it n1, which is a natural number, such that for all small n greater than or equal to that n1, we have that the modulus of xn minus x is strictly less than epsilon. The same is true for the sequence yn, namely that since yn tends to y, we have the exact same thing, but this time we have an n2 as our natural number, and we replace all of the x's by y's. Now, if we want to show that xn yn tends to xy, then we ought to look at the modulus of xn yn minus xy. Is there a way of writing this expression in order to use the earlier inequalities that we have, namely this one and this one? One way of doing this is to write that this is equal to the modulus of xn minus x to get that in there, but then have a yn, and then we have this term that we didn't have before, which is minus xyn, so if we plus xyn minus y, then indeed these middle terms cancel out, and we end up with xn yn from here minus xy from here. Next, the triangle inequality allows us to split this up as an inequality. This is less than or equal to the modulus of xn minus x times by yn plus the modulus of x times by yn minus y using the triangle inequality. Now, in general, the modulus of the product a, B is equal to the product of the moduli, which is the modulus of A times the modulus of B. So we can use this to separate factors in the above expression on the right hand side of the inequality. We get that it's equal to, if I draw an arrow to this, this is equal to the modulus of Xn minus X times by the modulus of yn plus the modulus of x times by the modulus of yn minus y. Again, this result here is an equality relating this to this, but we still have the earlier inequality from the triangle inequality. Now, we do this because we notice that we have our earlier expressions in our original inequalities, namely the modulus of xn minus x and the modulus of yn minus y. If we apply the convergence inequalities, which are that the modulus of xn minus x is strictly less than epsilon, and the modulus of yn minus y is also strictly less than epsilon, then we have that this expression is strictly less than the modulus of yn times epsilon from this to this, and then plus the modulus of x times by epsilon. Again, modulus of x goes to here, 
and with the inequality we have this epsilon from here. Bundling these together, this is equal to the modulus of yn plus the modulus of x times by epsilon. Now, in order to proceed, we need to use an extra idea. If this modulus of yn were actually a constant like the modulus of x is, then we would be done because we would have reached a constant multiple of epsilon, which is acceptable since it does not depend on little n. We didn't discuss this in the video on this topic, but if you have a convergent sequence, then it is also bounded. We want to use this result for the sequence yn, and so we have that yn is bounded since it is convergent. And this means that there exists a value c such that the modulus of yn is less than c for all values of n. Notice that the definition of convergence that we discussed earlier, right in the beginning for the sequences xn and yn, has a restriction to small n being greater than or equal to some capital N. But this does not matter for boundedness because the values of the sequence before capital N are finite numbers. And so either way, overall, the function must be bounded. We'll state this without proof here, but it would be a good exercise to try and prove for yourself that if a sequence, say, yn, as we've used here, is convergent, then it is bounded. Hence, we have this expression here, and if I draw another arrow, this will be strictly less than c plus the modulus of x multiplied by epsilon using this boundedness inequality here. Overall, if we chain the inequalities together right from the beginning, which was from here, we get that the modulus of xn yn minus xy is strictly less than some number c plus the modulus of x multiplied by epsilon. And since this is a constant multiple of epsilon, we have indeed shown that xn yn tends to xy, or rather converges to xy as its limit. And hence we have proven our earlier statement. If you've enjoyed this video, then please consider liking and subscribing, and also checking out our full Udemy course, of which the link is in the description. Thanks for watching, and goodbye for now.